Our next story is about making beautiful music and honoring a family tradition. For Olivia Pelling, fine strings tug on the heartstrings. Sometimes what you become in life has a lot to do with where you've come from. Olivia Pelling was raised in Muskoka and Toronto, nurtured by a family with a musical soul. My mom um, actually was my first violin teacher and I grew up with her playing violin and piano to, to myself and my siblings. And, um, and then she married my stepfather who was a violin maker. And uh, so it just, the violin, the violin part of my life grew. <laughs> Siegfried Wagner started his violin business in Belgium in 1930, moved it to Bracebridge, Ontario 30 years later. Now deceased, his widow, Ruth Wagner, Olivia's mom, continues to operate Wagner Violins, keeping his legacy alive. Do you have recollections of being in the workshop, that sort of thing? Yes, definitely, and uh, recollections of my mom learning how to make instruments and um, yeah, it's just a fascinating place with lots of shavings everywhere. And <laughs> Today, Olivia is making a few shavings of her own in an Ottawa shop fueled by memories and music and fine strings. I felt a, a need to have a creative outlet, I suppose, and... Um, and music is such a strong part of who I am that that this was really a, fan, a, a great connection. And I, I love to work with the wood and to carve it and um, to, to end up with, a, with an instrument that has its own voice. And so it just fit. I make instruments uh, so on commission, so it, anybody who might want an instrument could have one and be... Um, part of the whole uh, process of making, actually, um, down to choosing what's, what design they want, what model, what color they want the varnish to be, um, what they want it to sound like. I cater to all people, whether they're beginner or whether they're uh, professional, um, whether they're a fiddler or whether they're a classical player or anywhere else, any other type of musician. Um, I'm happy to do whatever needs to be done. It's continued to fascinate me and um, every day I find it interesting. They're like people, they have their own personalities and their own voices and um, so it's each, each instrument's different. Her first instrument was not a violin or a viola, but something more angelic, inspired by a journey across the pond and her luthier parents. I made my first instrument after I went on a trip to Scotland and played um, a harp there. And when I returned, I wanted to play harp more, but couldn't afford to. And my stepfather and mother said to me, why don't you make one? And so they gave me the wood and I took the class, um, an evening class at Ontario College of Art and Design. And um, two years later, <laughs> I had my harp. So that was the start of it. I just, after working with the wood and being able to create an instrument, I, I just wanted to do more. So uh, when I moved to England, I um, had the opportunity to go back to school and, um, and did so. Olivia already had two university degrees in arts and education. And while she loved teaching, the City of London offered the perfect venue to satisfy her urge to design and build instruments. It was a perfect opportunity. My husband went there for work and uh, we don't actually in Canada have many places at all to learn the trade of violin making. So I went to Merton College, south of London. So I had a, an hour and 15 minute tube, tube ride every day, <laughs> both ways, each way. Um, but it was, it was worth it. There were people in my, in my class who took two hours to, to get there. It's, it's one of those things that um, I guess once you get the bug to do it, you, <laughs> you'll travel any distance <laughs> to be able to do so. She studied violin making, repair, the art of acoustics, even the business of operating your own shop. The program's a three-year program. Um, I d did it in two, but it's a three-year program. <laughs> How did you do it in two? I worked very hard. <laughs> really? Yep. And is that driven by your passion for it? Yes, yeah. Back in Ottawa, she studied with luthier Guy Harrison, 
before opening her own place in the capital about a year and a half ago. There aren't a lot of female luthiers, so that's, that's, been, um, that's been nice to see that people are receptive to, to me as a female luthier. Traditionally, it's been very much a, a, man's, a man's field, but more and more there are, there are women coming into the field, um, which is nice. I think it gives it balance. Again, is that an influence of your, your mom who liked to build instruments? Possibly, yes. Did she say, why not? Was she one of those type of people? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia makes fine violins here, but admits to a certain love affair with the viola an instrument she plays in the Ottawa Chamber Orchestra. The violin is the soprano sound and the viola is the alto sound. Um, so I just like the, the deep richness of the C and the G strings and, and uh, the mellowness of it as well. When I became a teenager, I, I, I decided I, I love the violin, but I, I love the sound of the viola a little bit more. <laughs> so <laughs> I switched to viola. Um, and, and have been very happy. And I play violin now as well, but um, viola is my instrument of choice. Because you're a musician, does it make you a better builder? I feel that it does. Um, I, I can't imagine trying to set up an instrument and play it and hear, it and hear, uh, hear the sound and adjust the sound without being able to play. Um, I find it a really, a really big help. And also when customers bring me an instrument that they're having trouble with um, and they play it for me and then ask me to play it, I find it so much of an advantage to be able to play um, that I, I really can't imagine not being able to play. Many of Olivia's designs are of course rooted in tradition based on the models of the Italian masters. But she does bring a little Olivia Pelling innovation to each one. And the models that have been made um, have been have been the way they have been for a couple hundred years, <laughs> and they're good. They're good. <laughs> However, um, there also there's a, there is also room for experimentation, and um, I find that especially with viola making. At the moment, I'm making two small size violas. Um, the tr the trend has been to have very large sounding violas because it gives a good um, deep bass sound, uh, but there are a lot of players who want smaller instruments because they don't want to have the, a huge instrument that's uncomfortable to play for a long time. And uh, I also have enjoyed using um, wood that isn't typically used. I used some pear wood to make a viola um, recently. Usually it's maple uh, for the back and sides and neck and then spruce for the top, but I used pear instead. The fruit woods are just as good for sound as maple is, but maple is um, flashier, prettier. <laughs> Olivia invests some 400 hours in each instrument. Her choice of wood, a solid design, providing reliable and predictable results. There is, of course, an element of mystery. The builder not completely certain of how the piece will sound until the first note is played. I have a fair bit of control uh, over what it's going to sound like and how it's going to resonate by the wood I choose, by the arching um, that it has, by the way I choose to align my, my F holes and um, the way I shape my, my bass bar. But there is also a little hint of, of mystery as well that, uh, that, that lends a lot of excitement once the instrument's been put together and is able to be played. It's very exciting when, it, when it's first strung up to, to hear what it sounds like. Olivia welcomes repairs, both intricate and simple in her Ottawa shop, and offers quality used violins for sale. She also gives classes for budding luthiers. I offer an evening class um, one, one night a week, and uh, for three hours I have um, students come, a uh, maximum of three, and they, I teach them how to make violins. They do need to work at home if they're going to finish one during the 16-week time, but um, but it's, it's a, a fun thing to accomplish. When not building or playing classical music with an orchestra, Olivia performs with a local Celtic band in Ottawa. In 1999, she studied traditional fiddle and step dancing in Scotland. She's taught violin to the disadvantaged 
and children with special needs. Since first picking up the violin as a little girl, Olivia Pelling has dreamed of living a musical life. Today, this innovative luthier couldn't be happier as she watches that dream come true. We're happy, very happy in Ottawa. It's a great city and lots happening in the string world here. Lot, lots of music. So you see a musical future here? I do. <laughs> Well, it's easy to see why Olivia's career choice has put a song in her heart. <laughs> well, she not only has the chance to make beautiful music, but she can help others do the same and honor the work of her mother and her stepfather. Olivia, thanks so much for making music with us. I just take a seat, I 